Hello Rubbags, it's Jade. Welcome to the Survival Show every single Saturday, giving you the news you need to know about brand new survival games, big updates to your favourite ones, yada yada yada, you know the score. We've got stuff going on with the day before this week, going to be talking about in depth 7 Days to Die and the console re-release, was it a scam, as well as a bunch of other stuff with some of the new games that I've been really enjoying like Breakwaters, Planet Crafter and a bunch more. As always showing you some new games and we are going to go on a bit more of a rant as well about Fallout 76 and their continuous cash grab practices with their latest edition that's going to be coming soon. So do make sure you like the video and if you appreciate all the survival news and go and check out the timestamps if you want to skip anything. Let's go! The day before the kind of division meets DayZ has got another tease and looks like they're doing another reveal with IGN, yes whoopee doo. They don't seem to be keen on working with too many other smaller independent influencers lately, only giving me this quick download tease to show off. I kind of do hope they do start branching out a little bit more rather than just IGN. Now after a good few weeks of teasing and a delay they ended up showing off some mud spinner stuff with trucks going through some pretty muddy boggy biome and now we've got some zombies twitching in the corridors. So it could be interesting, this game has got a lot of hype, is it going to live up to it? We just don't know but I'm keen to find out so I'll drop the news as soon as we get any more about this. So a good few weeks ago now I showed off Breakwaters, a lot of YouTubers have covered it now and streamers as they were given some early access by developers and it is a promising game for sure. I think it could do big big stuff if it carries on getting help and support and development. It was a Kickstarter game, it got funded and now they're fully functional adding a bunch more stuff in the last few weeks including the floating docks that I showed you just now at the beginning of the show but this as well, the ability to pump water in and out. Really innovative stuff going on with this game and I can't wait to check it out in another re-version or revisit of it soon. So come and join their discord, keep up to date with what's going on with development and maybe sign up for their newsletter you may get informed about any betas that up and run in the future but it does look like they're going to be going into early access very very soon in the near future so I can't wait to see that and see how far this game will go in the next few months and possibly years I think it's got something special about it. Another game that I showed you guys a little while ago Planet Crafter has been bubbling along as well and they've got another brand new update this one you can access just by being part of their discord Join a Discord, sign up to the newsletter and you hopefully will get added to the list that will receive a build, a demo of the game to try it for yourself. In Planet Crafter your mission is to pretty much give life back to a dusty, arid planet, making sure it's got enough resources that are getting made or crafted or pumped to turn the atmosphere into something breathable and eventually make it a nice green and lush environment. The latest update has added a bunch more of base building showing the first signs of the terraforming system, changing the atmosphere colour as well as wrecks to explore, day and night cycle and save system and in their discord they've been showing a bunch of stuff off like brand new cave systems also a rocket that you'll fire into the atmosphere to help you terraform this planet. So yeah if you're looking for a new game to play go and join their discord again I'll leave the links in the comment section for this one. Sign up to their newsletter and try out the game for yourself. Rust console players, especially on PlayStation, you finally caught up. Your update 1.5 went live for you. This went live for Xbox, I do believe, last Friday or Thursday. And finally, PlayStation got this a couple of days ago. I have gone through this in the past in detail, so I'm not necessarily going to cover it again. But again, just more bug fixes with no anywhere in sight anything to do with actual brand new content, the skin store, or able to have your own servers. One improvement they have though made for PlayStation 4 at least, and they've said it's fixed it on Xbox as well, is that animals were play being targeted basically in safe zones. So the bug fix that went live was causing more issues as players were getting shot as the automated turrets were aiming at the piggies. I won't go on about Rust but just to give you guys a heads up just in case you have ignored it for a little while since you played it. From what I can tell from some of you guys in Discord, does look like they are now starting to maybe think about some of the plans to introduce the stuff they over promised and hopefully we'll start seeing some of the stuff that'll actually make this game worth revisiting properly in the future. 
So for every game that I sometimes defend and every game that I sometimes rip into, there's always a bit of a middle ground. What I expect from developers is communication. If problems are arising, there's issues with updates, or you're in early access and you may be not able to get the kind of content you want, you've got to let your community know. Zelta have had some issues in the last few months. This is like a 2D kind of don't starve, running around a zombie apocalypse world, gathering resources, building up your base defenses against hordes of zombies that attack you, as well as loot in and pretty much shooting. Back in April they put a announcement out that they wouldn't maybe necessarily be updating on Steam as much directly in terms of progress but they would be going to their own newsletter which I always found a bit stupid and a bit weird and they haven't had a proper update since April so that's a good few months and they've got really no talking about what was going on unless you did find the developer note. Basically they've decided to group a lot of the smaller updates together. They found that they weren't maybe necessarily being able to work on it properly and they want to kind of get everything together and give it all in one go. Now this isn't that unusual. We've seen from Valheim recently that they decided to go through that approach and Grounded have also decided to go into three month update cycles rather than every single month. And that's the difference between a good and a bad kind of communication style with Zelta only really having this information going around on their Discord before finally updating some of these little dev notes that have been put in on a separate website. It's pretty much 101. If you've got a game running on Steam, absolutely make sure you're putting information on Steam. Maybe it's a language barrier. They are based in Japan as well, and obviously they're a small team, but it does seem like they need to do a bit more revamping with their communication. The game itself is okay. I found it a bit fiddly when I tried it back last year when it came out, and the controls were a bit dodgy too, but there's definitely premise here, a good idea. I love the art style, and so I'm hoping they can come good, and hopefully we'll see this update maybe in the next couple of months. But it does look likely that might not happen until September, even maybe October. So hopefully it'll be enough to keep players that bought the game happy, and it'll show progress that has been being made. Some big sales markers for a couple of games I've covered in the last six months, nine months. Valheim hitting 8 million copies sold. I've been doing a few videos talking about the Hearth and Home updates and the criticism over the top stuff that's been going on with the game. The new update is on its way. It's looking likely to arrive in the next few weeks, possibly in, in under the next month. And the last count we had in terms of copies sold was around 7 million. That was back in like April, maybe May. Or in just still a short space of time, two and a half months, they've managed to hit another million copies sold. Financial reports from Embracer Group that published the game under their Coffee Stain Studio revealed that they have indeed hit another million copies. Absolutely astonishing, doing this faster than any other survival game out there. Even Minecraft took nearly 18 months, two years to get to the same level. I think it was 10 million by the time it came around to its second anniversary. So Valheim does look likely to be hitting that 10 million within just one year. It's great stuff, I can't wait to carry on and I've got something in the works with the developer of Valheim, one of them at least anyway, Robin, as well as possibly something with Tribes of Midgard. They posted just tonight when I was recording this video that they've hit 750k players literally in the last three weeks since launch so they're looking like they're going to be hitting maybe that 1 million marker in a month of release and that's great news for these indie games. I think Tribes is a solid game, go and check out my review for it or some of the guides and tutorials I've already done. And yeah, I'm hoping to bring you a crossover between Valheim and Tribes of Midgard very soon. So stay tuned for that and look out for some posts where I'll ask you guys to ask some questions. Open Countries finally got a update. It's been a good few weeks since it had one and it was majorly just bug fixes before. They've made some changes to make maybe the game a little bit easier and accessible and something pretty basic like being able to get logs, branches and leaves from actual trees now. It was a complaint of mine when I played it that you couldn't actually get some of the most basic resources from trees around you. You had to find them on little patches on the floor. Well now you will be able to pretty much hack away at them with an axe or knife using your melee attack and gain some natural resources. You'll also be able to get some rope going to reduce how much of the degradation goes on your tools when using them and a bunch of other improvements, fixes, especially with collision and bugs on the map as well as fixing stuff to do with missions not being tracked. It's not been a great launch for Open Country. 52% of the reviews in the last 30 days are positive and only 42 since the game come out. It's kind of like a, at some points a 360 looking game versus sometimes looking fantastic. But lots of bugs, unnecessary long windedness and grind and definitely wasn't ready to be released. 
fingers crossed they can carry on now and hopefully keep adding more there's definitely a lot of content in the game so i don't necessarily think it needs bunches and bunches of new stuff added it just needed to be in a much better playable position it does look like these updates will be going live on the xbox and playstation 4 versions of the game as well very soon if not already out there the game i showed off like literally a couple years ago now has finally got a proper release date a way the survival series is going to be coming to all platforms and it's going to be coming very soon this new survival game where you control a sugar glider as you pretty much glide around jungles forests and coastlines maybe trying to get food and survive pretty much in huge massive beautiful environments there are some other creatures you will also be able to control as part of the game and it's definitely something i've kept my eye on a long time including being able to possibly be a frog and even a praying mantis the game's release is going to be the 28th of September digitally across all platforms and physical copies of the game will be available on October the 1st. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. It's something I like the idea of. I love any type of survival game that mixes it up and is not just another zombie fest. So I'll do my best to show this off when the game releases on that 28th of September. Conan Exiles is finally allowing you to take your character from one world and transfer it to another server. We take this for granted in games like Art Survival Evolved and DayZ, but some games like Rust and Conan don't allow you to do this, while Conan is finally joining the ranks of server transfer. They announced this a while back and I thought it was pretty exciting. One of the things that I've always thought about Conan Exiles is that officials are really dead and have been dead for a long time, other than the hype that gets generated by the game going free to play or possibly the brand new DLC map they had a little while ago, the servers on official are so, so low in terms of players. With only 40 players being around, 10 player max on clans, if you get a good grip in Conan Exiles, it's pretty hard to lose it. No one's really going to come up against you and topple you in PvP. And unlike Ark, where you can take your dinosaurs and all your items with you, Conan Exiles isn't doing that. I think they're taking it so you can take your character, but not any items, armor, or any of your creatures or thralls. It's simply just the ability to have everything unlocked, go to a new server, and I think this could open up the game massively. If you're bored and you're one because you've dominated, well now you can go for a challenge of dominating another server. This update's rolling out on PC now, expect it to be tested for the next good few weeks. And yeah, I'm predicting we'll see it arrive on Xbox and PlayStation in the next two to three weeks. Maybe a bit longer if there's any problems. This update 2.5 also introduces a huge amount of bug fixes and quality of life improvements. They've added some smaller pens by the looks of things, so you don't have to build huge massive cities anymore just to have your favorite creatures. Lots of weapon types and stuff has been adjusted, debuffed, buffed, and lots of new animations have also been added. So good stuff for Conan, like I said, I was pretty much ignoring this game because I just didn't like the way that things went down last year with consoles. But in the last three months, they do seem to be going and getting a lot of stuff done and dusted what you would expect. I'm not going to go through all of this stuff. You know who you got to follow to get all the patch notes. Kaya on fire. If you've not already seen, you're interested in dipping back into Conan, go and check out her content. She will have the lowdown completely and fully about all the changes with 2.5. Will I dip back into Conan? Maybe as part of my 100 days of survival, possibly. But yeah, it's still probably way down on the list just yet. Small Lands is looking very good indeed. It looks like it may possibly show some stuff off as the future game show coming up. Certainly Merge, the publisher, are going to be there in a big way. And that's going to be coming in the next like week or two, I think. But they've got another creature feature every Friday showing off something, whether it's a Q&A, and this is what we've missed over the last couple of weeks. Now, the Ladybug is pretty much docile. It's not necessarily going to be an aggressive or attacking creature. It's a secondary consumer, and there is a food chain going on with Small Land. It will be loyal to you, and it's inquisitive, hardy, and it can be used as bait. You'll find it all over the map of Small Land. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Now in Grounded, these guys are pretty much one of the toughest creatures in terms of HP. Maybe not necessarily always as dangerous, but they've got some moves. So it's interesting to see that they're making maybe the Ladybug in Small Lands maybe not as big or as important. There was still a Q&A last week with just a couple questions, little teases. If you don't know, there will be bosses added to the game, and as you would expect, it's something to do with spiders. But yeah, this little question says that the boss creature spider has some history with some of the Pathfinders. They're pretty much your people that go and explore the small land world. 
and that your job as the vanguard is to go out and forage for resources and special items. You'd be growing or trying to find stuff to craft. And the question was, is there anything like in the movie Arietti, like needles for swords or sugar cubes for sweetening tea? And in their answer, they said that the special unique items that you can only get or craft once completing certain objectives for factions. Lots of these creatures may be part of a faction and you may actually have to help them out and do stuff for them. They've also said that armor is going to be on show a lot more than they've already revealed. If you want to catch up on more of this, I've got loads of stuff, including an interview with the creator of the game. Let's go and check it all out. But yeah, pretty excited about Small Lands coming soon. More new survival games to show you off. No Man's Island. Forgive the kind of slightly trashy survivor-esque intros. This is another sort of Don't Starve style game where you'll be going around an island, gathering resources, building up a base and pretty much try and survive as you explore this island. It looks okay. A bit rough around the edges. The UI definitely needs a bit of work. But these games are kind of in vogue at the moment. Project Zomboid and others have made a lot of these kind of games very, very much more popular. It's almost like a simulation game, but where you only control one player. So I like the look at this one. I'm probably going to give it a go. They had a free demo available. It might still be there now on Steam, so go and check it out. And yeah, like I said, I might try and give it a try or a shot in the next coming weeks as well, if I can get some time. Okay, people, we've kind of maybe got some answers about Seven Days to Die and what happened with its re-release. Told you guys a few months ago in now that they were looking to get some people on board for Fun Pimps to start looking at getting the game ported back to next-gen consoles. No, not an update for current gen, but actually making it available for next-gen only. So I was quite surprised to come across when one of you guys told me about this, Seven Days to Die re-releasing on game, the British website, pretty much one of the biggest game sites still going on High Street. Now some of you guys have said that you pre-ordered the game and maybe you was expecting it to have what it says here in the listings. So do let me know and show me some proof that you have actually bought it from game recently because of its re-release because it is kind of very, very much a case of misleading information. We did check in the end, you guys let me know, that yep, of course, electricity and turrets were never added to the console versions of the game, but it's here clearly listed. Now, supposedly the product is currently out of stock. I didn't actually go and end up buying it. I meant to, but you know, busy stuff going on with family over the last few weeks. And so when I tried last night, it simply said it was out of stock. So what I'm asking is, has anyone managed to buy a copy of Seven Days to Die from game in the last week or so? Did you receive your game? Have you received any info about it? I told you guys that I actually DM'd them myself on Twitter and they replied that this stock would be new that has been sent by the manufacturer of the game as I was querying because there are two different SKUs for the game. So apparently Joel did comment on another YouTuber's video saying that this was fake news and it does look likely that is the case. But something's gone on here. Game aren't just in the business of lying or putting up brand new SKUs or going to this much effort. Somewhere, somewhere down the line, someone has authorised this information to go out. Whether or not it was mistaken, whether or not it's meant to be doing something in the future, who knows. But as Game have said, and I've seen from other messages that you guys have sent me as well, they are adamant that they were given this information by the manufacturer of the game, and the manufacturers of the game are fun pimps. And of course, there hasn't been any update for the game digitally if you own it. Also, I never told you guys that either. I don't know why any of you would maybe assume that. All I simply said was it was interesting to me that they were reselling this game because to my mind, they shouldn't be reselling it in any stores, especially when they've got this kind of information. At least on digital platforms, you will notice that they don't actually include some of the stuff to do with auto turrets, electrical power, and so there's no way to say that it's false advertising. We may be unhappy that the game hasn't been updated in nearly four years, but this is definitely a next step. So yeah, we're still none the wiser what's going on. Was it just exploratory by the fun pimps to see kind of what interest would be generated? Was it a genuine mistake made by someone in marketing? Some of you guys have told me that you have got hold of copies. So yeah, absolutely take it back to game and tell them they are selling you false goods or falsely advertised goods. Bottom line, it probably isn't a developer's issue at this stage. If you want a refund, you should be able to get one from game. What should have happened was though, the fun pimps should have made it an official statement on Twitter or put it on the actual forum website instead of one random comment on just one YouTube video. 
Again, another example of how poorly they communicate with people. Even if it was fake news, it was enough to generate thousands of views for me and thousands of views for other YouTubers that have covered this news. And while we don't want to get you guys falsely hyped up, when you see shit like this going on, you can only assume one thing, that it's probably legit, especially coming from an actual proper retailer. This isn't some low-key crap website. And when they're telling you that it's been sent by the manufacturer of the game, then yeah, something's a little bit off. Were they just trying to see if they can get some more money by selling it physically? They didn't maybe anticipate a bit of the backlash that would come across it? Who knows? But something's off, and it's not up to me to find out or you. It should be up to the fun pimps to give a proper, concise answer. Any more develops on this, I will of course cover it. I was going to do this in a separate video, but I ain't going to lie. I've just run out of time. This is my last weekend with my family for a good couple weeks. So I'll be on the grind doing my new stuff that's happening next week. But yeah, time is precious this week for me. But yeah, I'll let you guys know any more info on that. So Fallout 76, the game that just can't seem to catch a break. Well, not with me anyway. Last night they announced their brand new world system, which will be coming with a new update for the game. Pretty much they're going to have some variations on the Appalachia world that you explore. They're going to be parameters set by the developers. And these are going to change every single month to give something a bit fresh for players that are enjoying the game but want something a bit new, a bit different. Maybe they'll make some of the enemies spawn in twice as hard. Maybe they'll make certain types of ammo not available. Or maybe they'll make a certain elemental damage do more damage. A lot of these things we take for granted if you play survival games like Ark, Conan, where you can adjust and change what damage creatures do, how much loot you get and the resources that you can come across. And I've had something along these lines in there like adventure mode, but you had to have the membership first to get access to this. But this will be the first time that everyone gets to try a brand new fresh world or fresh system. The first one's called Butcher's Choice and it's going to last one month. I don't think you get any progress or massive rewards though to take over with your other characters on other worlds though. And this is available for free for everyone. You'll see it on the menu when it rolls out on like September the 10th or 11th or 8th or something. If you have Fallout First subscription, you will now be able to customize your world completely and utterly. If you wanna make no ammo, that's totally fine. You can swap out creatures, I do believe. You can change all sorts of loot and random generation, as well as different types of monsters, weather, effects, and more. Again, some of the stuff that you expect in other games, survival games like Ark and Conan. So this sounds good, but unfortunately, of course, it means only people with the membership get to have this. Once again, not giving what most people want, which is either single player, which is offline, or the ability to just rent a proper server. These worlds are accessible by your friends, but as soon as you turn the game off, unless anyone else has the Fallout First membership, the server will close down. So it's not really a proper server rental. It's a hundred pounds to buy a year's worth of content for this or 12 pounds a month to access this kind of content. And it's absolute laughable and derogatory that Bethesda are still trying to put this shit out there. You go to any server rental site, including the Trado I'm partners with, cheeky plug, if you use my code as well as the link you'll find in the description of every video, you can get yourself 10% off a brand new server rental. For pretty much the same price, you'll get 16 slots instead of the seven that Bethesda give you. You can swap out as many different maps as you want, change up as much as you want. And if you're really into stuff, you can add a bunch of different modifications. Even on console, you can swap out creature spawns and do all sorts of crazy stuff. I've shown a lot of this off over the years in lots of guides and tutorials. And of course, the best bit that these servers never turn off. Your friends can carry on playing while you're asleep. Whether it's PvP, PvE, you can do your own thing. So it's still just an absolute joke that Fallout won't make the necessary changes. This was all announced as part of QuakeCon. I'm guessing it was meant to be a good, happy thing to be announced. But it's absolute dog shit value for players. And don't get me wrong if you love Fallout 76. You love the environment. You love the way that the updates have improved the game over the last couple years. More power to you, but you surely got to recognize that this is poor value. This is the kind of shit that would normally be a given. Single player comes with a lot of survival games. There's only Rust and DayZ that have never offered it. 
and to rent a server that you can't actually keep going unless another one of you has the subscription is absolute nonsense. So yeah, people keep trying to get me to try this game and I just will not until I start seeing some actual proper improvements where they're not trying to fleece players. They're just not doing enough to actually make up for some of the shit they've pulled. I kind of hoped moving over to Microsoft might have improved this situation, but clearly not. Microsoft love a pound note and clearly some players are still spending their stupid money on this stuff. So yeah, not a win, an absolute loss in my opinion. And judging by the amount of likes that were on the comment that I posted, a lot of you guys agree. Create single player, get rid of the Fallout first, just make it that you can rent the servers completely. And I think most people will then start thinking about the game in a positive light. The Infected, a game I've had in my library for like literally mostly a year now. I still haven't managed to sit down and give it a try. It's got some brand new updates. Actually, that's a lie. I did give this a try and it was probably over a year ago that I gave it a go. Or was that missed? I don't know. I'm getting confused with these. But yeah, they've had an update today. Adds a brand new truck vehicle, new crafting stations, items and a bunch more. Now, it's another game that's been developed by a very tiny, tiny little team. And so updates for this have been pretty slow, but as you would kind of expect, and that's okay. But I've got to say it looks okay. It looks a little bit like a cross between a farming simulator. I don't think the truck is actually a tractor, but it kind of reminds me of one. You'll be able to have a brand new garage to house your truck. They've got an oil distillery, new items for your gas cans and stuff like that, as well as a crossbow upgrade. And you'll now be able to get wool from sheep, make carpet particularly, so adds a little bit more refinement to your survival bases. Big huge metal doors and a bunch more. New road environment as well to gather and go and get resources a bit quicker. Creative settings. So yeah, looking good and yep, absolutely once I get that magical time somewhere, I will hopefully try and visit this one. And that's it, I'm pretty much back to normal after having like three weeks with family, decorating and all sorts for the summer. And now I'll be grinding away on my 100 days of survival series, kicking off massively very much this week. Also gonna be doing list videos for you guys. I'm gonna get back to my top 50 ranked survival games, I promise. And check me out on Twitch where I'm gonna be live streaming this week a lot more. You'll find the links to that also in the description box. Any game news I missed, anything you want me to cover, leave it in the comment section and I'll see you rat bags later.